did not intend to frighten you, skinny human. Glad we're out of there. Welcome back to another NCUT movie review and today we have Spaceman and if you have arachnophobia do not watch this film and don't forget to like and subscribe skinny human Adam Sandler stars in this film as Jakob, an astronaut who's been sent into space to study an anomaly in the sky, which is this purple haze, purple cloud that's come up in the sky. Thanos, what have you been up to? <laughs> Pause. Part of the snap. Start to see him dealing with the effects of the isolation of being alone the whole time, also the effects on his mental health, and also the strain on his relationship with his pregnant wife, who is at home throughout the whole journey, and she's pretty much wanting to end the relationship, and Mission Control doesn't want to let that happen because they think that will be the last tether for Adam Sandler's character, Sanity. Paul Dano stars in this film only as a voice though he comes in as an extraterrestrial arachnid gigantic aragorg hagrid's best friend looking spider who is creepy as all hell and his special ability is he can go into adam sandler's mind and see his memories and see all of his life that's gone by and we find out that adam sandler's character is very troubled has a very troubled past has a very troubled present where he can't essentially he can't he has no emotion he can't show any emotion whatsoever due to past traumas from his dad from his life that he had as growing up and that's the reason why his wife doesn't want him and the whole movie pretty much is him dealing with the loneliness the isolation and Paul Dano's character using his telepathic abilities to sort through all of Adam Sandler's characters traumas and through his relationship and how he can sort of fix it and why Adam Sandler's character has been the problem the whole time rather than everyone around him which is sort of the mindset that he has throughout the movie the movie is based off a 2017 novel called Spaceman of Bohemia by Yaroslav Kalfa and it's Adam Sandler's I think what 20th Netflix film th these days I think what did he sign a hundred 20 film 10 billion dollar deal or whatever he did man was the highest paid actor last year and did no movies in cinemas all netflix films he's pretty much holding up the whole of netflix it's the way of the future now isn't it mm. the implication point for this film was on a lot of different mental health questions a lot of different neglection traumatic child upbringing and all of this kind of impacts on what he is now as an adult and you can clearly see that this is taking a toll on his body and the direction of his life that he's heading towards so for him to meet paul dano's character hanush that was the key for him to move past that trauma, that barrier that's been keeping him back and hopefully move on to a better life. And, and I think we have to speak about Paul Dono's acting in here. I mean, his voice comes across as something scary, but also calming. It's a weird it's a weird dichotomy he's got going on through this film. I mean, just in saying that though, he plays it so well. He plays this God version very, very well. And that's props to Paul Dano because he's always well read. He's always well prepared. And he, he delivers on these characters that he's playing. But it must be so hard for him to try play this type of character when no one has all the answers but you're trying to play something that you do like imagine trying to do that would be very difficult but Paul Dano always has amazing preparation and he kind of just immerses himself into these characters and that's why he is on at least our list the greatest actor of all time with these performances and he's just immaculate in this film so you've got to go see him it's an interesting look at like mental health because a lot of people probably do struggle with the fact of it's easier to just deflect all your problems and say oh this is the reason for this and this is the reason for that rather than Paul Dano's character makes Adam Sandler or Yuck Jacob actually look the problem in the face and go, oh, it's me, I'm the problem. And it takes him pretty much the whole film to learn or to come to grips with that or come to terms with that. And it's sort of like a coming of age film in that regard, even though it's a really weird sequence towards the end that it sort of happens in. The movie was really odd. It had like a lot of different layers and a lot of different avenues it could kind of go down. And it chose to do Jacob's mental health, the, the fear of isolation or the constant isolation, I guess, these astronauts are facing throughout their time up in space. The fear of truth. That's a really common theme that keeps reoccurring in the movie and also a common thread that keeps on getting discussed in the movie and Paul Dano's character mentions it is humans are just afraid of the truth that we lie I no love you liar for no reason whatsoever we just lie to make somebody else feel better or make yourself feel better and Paul Dano's character is always just saying like why do you fear truth yeah and that, that makes them run away from the problem most of the time and it's the interesting thing was in this film when you first get introduced to Paul Dano's character you don't know if he's real or not or he's just a figment of, of Adam Sandler's imagination because he's been up there for so long that some people do go delirious and Mission Control kept reinforcing that point as well so as a, as a viewer you're kind of thinking to yourself I mean is this thing real or is it all in his head is this going to be a movie where we get to the end and now it's all made up and he wakes up from a dream and he's back on the ship but at least from what the director has said the arachnid is real from his point of view it's real I mean and the one scene that he did chuck in there to make you think that was when he sneezed on Adam Sandler's helmet and he wipes it off it was up into interpretation up until that point but then you kind of get solidified and like knowing what if it is real or it's all dream or delusion because they go in with 
a lot of different uh, camera angles and the camera angles you're seeing through is like kaleidoscope vision. So you're seeing from two different view. And one being Paul Dano's yeah. and one being Adam Sandler's point of view. So as a, pov. and as an, uh, <laughs> as a pov, as a spider, you're seeing from eight eyes. That's the kind of vision that you see and you can kind of understand from where Paul Dano started to infiltrate his mind. It's really interesting that bit, but. Yeah, the movie itself is quite beautiful visually. It's not super, super, super stunning backdrops and, and cinematography like you would see in something like Dune 2. That's something, that's going to be our new reference point from now on because we have beautiful that movie was but the movie really did have some nice visuals most of the film is set on a space station and you sort of get ridley scott alien vibes from it a lot with uh ripley ripley, ripley! uh ripley vibes uh what's her what's her first name ria mommy mommy where are you please what is her first name alan ripley and the way that it's sort of filmed and it's i don't know when this film was supposed to be set i think it's meant to be futuristic but the space station itself looks very old the cameras are very grainy i think deliberately to sort of give that anxious sort of feeling that adam sandler's character is going through so that came across on the screen really well the purple mist in the sky the black hole that he pretty much goes into quite beautiful visually it's nothing on interstellar which it directly stole a whole sequence from but we won't go we won't go into that big spoiler we won't do that we won't go into that but visually it looked a good looking movie and from watching it from from the jump i got yeah like we said interstellar and alien ridley scott vibes i also noticed that adam sandler was actually looking quite distraught like he looked he was pale he was white the man looked like he was on death's door and i think that was just another thing that they've added on top of this to make you feel more interacted to this film and, and attached to the character. Yeah, one of the first shots you see of Adam Sandler in this film is he's looking at a screen. Imagine uh, Interstellar where Matthew McConaughey is reading his daughter's or his son's uh, in messages that they're sending up to him or, the, or when he was messaging back to them. It's essentially the same thing and yet we see Adam Sandler with this grainy sort of footage like Fallout very much reminded me of like Fallout Pit Boy, and he just looks weathered, and he looks disheveled. He's got the huge bags under the eyes. He looks like he hasn't slept in weeks and months, and that really sets the tone for the mindset that he's in in this film and where he is at mentally. And you got to give props to Adam f- for his going all in on this role, and I guess facially convey that emotion of distraughtness and loneliness and isolation, and and then putting on the brave face when Mission Control would call him and say, "Hey, hey, how are you?" and he would just lie to them, being like, "I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm okay." One of the negatives that I will say about the film is that it clearly stipulates that it's in the set in the Czech Republic. He's working for the Czech Republic government. He's a Czech Republic citizen. Everyone around him mostly have accents, and yet he just has this American accent. So that's the only sort of downfall. It's like I don't understand why an American is the Czech Republic's number one candidate to fly on a secret, super important mission into the sky. So huge shout out also to Paul Dano. The man, you can't even see his face in this, but yet he still steals the show. And his inflection in the way that he was able to talk in this film was able to get you in the mindset of a guy like Adam Sandler who was going through something and yet didn't want to accept that he was needing to change his ways. And the inflection that Paul Dano was able to have in this film with just only his voice was really great. That's exactly right. Like when I was listening to Paul Dano talk, I thought to myself, I do this to myself. I have the voice in my head telling me you should do something right. You should go this way. But we tend to ignore it. And Paul Dano's character kind of made you think like that. You think, oh yeah, that's exactly what I need to do. Reflect on your own personal being as well as connecting with Adam Sandler's character as well by doing so. It was, re- it was actually really well written. And while we're on Paul Dano, the arachnid that was obviously CGI'd throughout the whole film, it wasn't too badly CGI'd. The eyes on it made you feel... I mean, if you have any sort of arachnophobia or fear of spiders, looking into those five, six, seven, eight eyeballs that it has is absolutely freaky. And no matter how long into the film you realize whether the spider's good or bad, it still freaks you out. And even though it's Paul Dano's voice, it's absolutely freaky. Like, I, I was sort of on edge the whole film just looking at this gigantic spider, thinking to myself, this is probably my worst fear ever. So the rating for this, for me, will be probably about a 50 to 55%. I really, I did enjoy this film. I thought that the whole film as a concept was very interesting in in a new take, especially being in space, like an isolation take, a mental health take. I mean, the acting from Adam Sandler was phenomenal. He's he's becoming a new age of acting with his dramatic roles. As we've said in multiple movie reviews that we've done on Paul Dano, he is the man, he's the gold standard. He is our savior, Lord and savior. I love you, Paul Dano. Uh, I've abandoned my child. <laughs> I've abandoned my. I've abandoned my boy. My boy. I've abandoned my child. I've abandoned my boy. Also, shout out the director for this. I mean, he's done Chernobyl, he's just, which is the greatest miniseries of all time. The musical score in this was beautiful. It made you feel a certain way about 
the whole film and certain scenes. And I can't speak highly enough about just the collective as a whole for this film. I'd rate this film probably around about a 65%, 70%. I thought Adam Sandler's acting was really good in it. I thought the visuals were really cool. I hate spiders, so that side of things was horrible to watch. But Paul Dano saved it with being the voice actor. If it had been anyone else voicing, I don't think I could have sat through it because that spider was just horrible to look at. I love seeing Adam Sandler in these dramatic roles as he's gotten older. You know, we know he's the funniest, one of the best comedic actors of all time, if not the greatest. But it's good to see him change it up a little bit and do these dramatic roles. And his face in this just looked like a guy who had been through a lot. So hopefully he's doing all right. But that side of things was great. And hopefully Adam Sandler can keep holding up Netflix by releasing these great... Netflix films. Anyway, guys, it's been another end cut movie review. <laughs> Question of the day. What is Paul Dano's best film? Yeah. In my opinion, it is Little Miss Sunshine. Ha- Mine's Prisoner has to be. He's just the greatest actor of all. T- I just love him. Yeah. Can't speak highly about it. He doesn't miss, actually. Doesn't. Dumb money. Name, yeah. them all. Name them all. The Batman. Yeah. Riddler. He's the greatest. Anyway, guys, it's been another end cut movie review. Don't forget to drop the like and the sub. Peace, we out. Peace. And cut. When will I get I'm a uh... fucking clapper board? I keep saying this.